We've got Rick Newman. He's standing by uh, with the latest on Joe Biden and our weekly installment of Bidenomics. Um, and you're you're drawing a comparison between the events that we're witnessing now to events many of us can remember in our own lifetimes with President Reagan and what happened with the tragic bombing of the Marine barracks years ago in Lebanon. Yeah, and that's not the conventional wisdom, Adam. I think uh, many commentators are making the obvious connection with the fall of South Vietnam and Saigon in 1975. Uh, you, you know, no historical analogy is perfect here, but let's just think about what happened in 1983. There was a there were hundreds of U.S. service members in uh, in Lebanon as part of an international peacekeeping force. There was a bombing October of 1983. It killed 241 U.S. service members. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, Ronald's Ra Ronald Reagan's approval rating did not go down. It went up a little bit because that was back in the time when the nation would come together over events like that. Reagan pulled those troops out of Lebanon a few months afterward. And uh, of course, he got reelected mm -hmm. by a landslide about a year later in the 1984 elections. And I took a look at what, what else was going on in the United States back then. And lo and behold, the economy was recovering from those terrible back-to-back -back recessions in the late 70s and early 1980s. Employment was in, uh, unemployment was improving. Uh, inflation was coming down. Interest rates were coming down. Uh, corporate profits were going up and stocks were doing well. So I think that tells you that presidents can overcome foreign policy disasters if things are going pretty well at home. And that's the challenge I think Joe Biden, President Biden now faces going into the 22 midterms and the 2024 presidential election. And Rick, speaking of challenges that the president is facing, the developments out of Afghanistan today, we saw the reports that the Taliban have asked or requested that the U.S. do keep a diplomatic presence in the country beyond that August 31st withdrawal deadline that we have been talking about. Do you think that this is something that would make sense for the U.S. to do? Well, we seem to have a new and improved Taliban, or at least that's the uh, that's the marketing claim. Just to remind people, the Taliban was a pariah government when it uh, when it uh, ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. Uh, I mean, it was just a barbaric form of government. We remember stonings, for example, public stonings in the soccer stadium. It was just ghastly. So uh, it's possible. I mean, we have to be very skeptical. It's possible the Taliban has figured something out over the last 20 years when they've been out of power and said to themselves, maybe we wanna do this a little bit better in a little more lasting way with perhaps a little bit of outside help next time because if they don't get outside help, their economy will just return to the dark ages. It'll, it'll just end up being a black market economy like it was before with very little development or trade or aid. And uh, they probably realize that maybe they have a better chance of running the country with uh, the support of some of the people at least if they can keep the economy running. So. It, it's plausible that this is a sincere request, but uh, I think before the United States agrees to anything, we just have to get to the end of this um, withdrawal, hope there are no more terrorist incidents, and then kind of recalculate. 